says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and is tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I want to talk about the Holy Ghost being a stabilizer. Everybody say that the Holy Ghost is a stabilizer. Clap your hands and praise God for the word of God. As we are, as I mentioned, we've entered into the season of Pentecost. Pentecost uh, within itself means 50 or the 50th day. But we look at Acts chapter 2 and there was something that's significant that happened on the day of Pentecost and that for the first time the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, you can use those terms interchangeably, was poured out in the upper room upon the 120. And so we have taken the term Pentecost to really focus or speak of the experience that happened in Acts chapter 2. Uh, but what is more important, I think that uh, we cannot stop at the fact that Jesus died on the cross and he was resurrected. But Jesus stayed on earth after he was resurrected from the dead 40 more days to spend more time with his disciples, teaching them and sharing with them uh, things significant uh, that would be important for them before he's taken away back into heaven. So after 40 days, Jesus goes back into heaven and instructs them, as we just read, to go to Jerusalem and wait there until they be endued with power from on high. And when the Holy Ghost shows up, amen, those 120 are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know, we're living in a day now where a lot of people are talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. But it's not just enough to have something or think we have something and don't understand why you need it. Amen. There are some people say, well, I have a gun, but you need to understand what to do with the gun, and you need to understand what not to do with the gun. Right. Amen. There's no need to have an alarm in your house and you don't know how to work the alarm. Yes. There has to be an understanding of the alarm. So when you talk about Holy Ghost, uh, you're talking about Numa. Everybody say Numa. Numa means wind or breath. Amen. The Bible says God breathed into man. Amen. Into his nostrils and he became a living soul. So that tells me that in order for a man to live, he had to have breath. And same the same way in spiritual context, there has to be the pneuma, the breath, the breath of God, the spirit of God brings you life. That means you can be alive physically but dead spiritually. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be alive uh, physically and dead spiritually. But I want my spirit man to be alive. So when you talk about the Holy Ghost, you're talking about the pneuma, the breath, the wind of God. Amen. So over these next few weeks, we'll be talking about pneumatology. Everybody say pneumatology. Amen. You just learned a big word, didn't you? Pneumatology. Everybody say that again. Pneumatology. Pneumatology is the study of the person or work of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say that. The study of the person and the work of the Holy Ghost. It's important to know that the Holy Ghost is a person. Amen. It's not an it. It's not a thing. He's not a thing. He is a person. You wouldn't feel too good if somebody referred to you as a thing. Amen. You are a person. The Holy Ghost is a person and he has a personality. Amen. When you talk about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, amen, these are not three separate entities, but as we say, they are three in one. Amen. God manifests himself as the Father, uh, releasing his son Jesus in the earth, but he's still God in the likeness of human flesh. And so when he goes back, he sends back his spirit uh, so that all of us can experience God in our lives. Do you not know that the Holy Ghost, when he lives on the inside of you, that's the closest that uh, he or any other person can get to you when they are inside of you? Hallelujah. And there's some great things about God that I love. The fact that God, amen, he comes in our lives not just to cause us to have an emotional outburst. 
Because when you don't understand the Holy Ghost, you can have a whole lot of emotional thrills, but no real spiritual experience. I wish I had a witness in here. Uh, see, it's, it's not enough just to shout and dance, and we should praise God. But God says, I don't want you to have an emotional experience with me, but I want you to have a spiritual experience with me. Because when you only uh, deal with God from an emotional standpoint of view, you get an emotional high that is no different from when you're shooting cocaine. Lord, help me here. It's no different because when you come to church, you want to have that feel-good moment, and you can get high and get excited, and your adrenaline gets going because the music is going, and, and you've heard uh, something that excites you. But then once you finish shouting and dancing, the enemy will meet you on the parking lot, and you'll forget about all that energy you just experienced in the house because it was based upon emotion and not by faith. Hallelujah. We don't walk by sight. We walk and live by, everybody say, faith. And so the Spirit of God deals with our faith. He deals with us, our emotions and our wills to give us a constant relationship that builds us up and not tear us down. Amen. We sing that song. We, I, I used to sing that song. I stopped singing it because the devil lives a lie. I'm not up, down, almost level with the ground. When you get level with the ground, you're too low. But the Bible said, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. I may go through some things that are up and down, but I don't have to go up and down in my spirit. Hallelujah. There, there are too many of us, we are up and down, almost level with the ground because we don't have any inner power that controls our mind, our will, how we see things, how we view things. And it's all based upon what we have on the inside. Amen. God, as the Holy Ghost, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, all of those uh, three in one have those attributes that we speak of. He's omnipresent. Everybody say omnipresent, which means he's everywhere at the same time. Amen. That's, that means he's ubiquitous. Everybody say that ubiquitous. I'm not present. Y'all learned some big words today. How about that? Hallelujah. He's everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. He sees everything. Hallelujah. Not only is he omnipresent, but he's also omniscient. The word omniscient has a base word in its science, which means knowledge or knowing. That means God knows everything. So he's everywhere at the same time, and he knows everything, and then he's omnipotent. Everybody shout omnipotent. Amen. That means he is all powerful. That it makes no difference what who has power. It doesn't matter if the enemy has some kind of power. God has all power in his hand. 